Here to Help by a Mad Painter, a.k.a. T.R. Becker. She thumped her thumb to the beat of the music on the radio. Yes, the radio. She didn't care to listen on her phone or the computer when it came to music. She looked out the window at how hard it was raining and thought how she was glad to be inside. Her name was Sue, and she was about to turn 27, but looked no more than 20. She jumped as the lights of the house flickered off and back on as lightning flashed outside. By the time the rumble reached her, she was laughing at being jumpy. It was the first storm of the spring, and the first storm since she had moved into the old farmhouse. It was not a big house, but it was just right for her. It was old, but was well built. She had moved in just over a month ago and enjoyed the few things that needed to be fixed up. She had no real friends to speak of and no living relatives that she knew of, so was used to being alone. She was able to keep her internet business running fine from there as easy as in town. It only took a few hours a day. All she did was take orders online, notify the distributors, and when a sale was made, she received a percentage. It wasn't as easy as it sounds, but what, but she was a master at the keyboard. She could run 50 or 60 orders an hour. She had no real need for a man in her life at this time, but sometimes she would think about having a family. The radio cr crackled each time the lightning flashed. This irritated her. They were playing the soft rock that she liked so much. She decided to get out some candles from the kitchen just in case the power went out. She was going to paint over the dull light green walls to a light blue in the next couple of days. She had many ideas of what she could do to make the farm more her own. She had already ordered baby chicks and wanted a goat or two. She had the feeling that she'd be there a long time if not the rest of her life. It took her a a minute or two to find the candles. As she returned to her office, that at one time she was sure was a sewing room, the lights flashed again. The wind was picking up and the lightning was becoming more frequent, and now she could feel it. She looked at her computer. The net was down, so she checked her phone. It was still up, but only one bar showed. She was glad that her radio station was still working. That meant that power was still on in town. She had not ch checked the weather in a few days, so had no idea that, that storm could last a few days. She looked out the window that was on the side of the house. The side of the yard was not large before the woods started, maybe 20 yards. The trees were moving back and forth from the gusts of wind in an almost rhythmic fashion that changed with every flash of lightning. This gave her a creepy feeling, one she had never had in town when it stormed out. She wondered about the couple of feral cats that lived there. They would not come close to her yet, but she knew that one day they would trust her. On the radio, the DJ's low voice said, Hope you're all snug and warm. Temperatures drop to the 50s tonight as the storm continues. Here's a little m mood music for you. It was one of her favorites by the doors, Riders on the Storm. He had said rain to continue. She wondered for how long and if the river not too far would overflow the road. She was not worried about that too much. She had plenty of canned goods and as long as the power stayed on, her refrigerator freezer was full. She sat down on a small couch and took a sip of her iced tea and almost dropped the glass as lightning flashed, followed by a hard rumble. It had hit, hit something near, she thought. She was not worried about that too much. She had plenty of canned goods, and as long as the power stayed on, her refrigerator freezer was full. She sat down on a small couch and took a sip of her iced tea, and almost dropped the glass as lightning fl flashed, followed by a hard rumble. It had sit, hit something near she thought. She went to the kitchen where the window overlooked the backyard. As she reached it the lights flickered 
and stayed out this time. She couldn't see anything, so she went to the dining room window, where when she looked out, she saw that one of the oak, old oak trees had been hit. A huge branch laid across the driveway and had pulled down the electrical wire with it. There were sparks jumping from its end as the wind blew it around. It had missed her old truck, but not by much. The spark stopped, so she figured the power to the line went dead. She made her way back to the office and lit a candle, then remembered that her phone had a flashlight app on it. She picked it up and noticed there was no bars showing now. The service was now down too, but she knew that would not be down long or hoped it wouldn't. She sat back down and not sure what to do. She was not ready for bed yet. It was going to be a long night, she thought, and didn't think she'd be able to sleep as long as the storm was so intense. She looked at her phone again. It was at 50% power. She decided to turn it off to save power so in the morning she could call the power company. She laid back and watched the shadows jump around the room from the flicker of the candle and the lightning flashes, which had moved a little further away. Somewhere around midnight, she drifted asleep, but it was not restful. She dreamed that she was running from room to room in the house for some unknown or unseen evil. It was a raw fear in her mind that drove her. As she entered a room, the door would slam shut behind her on, it, on their own. Outside, it was storming and the wind was howling. She thought maybe she could run out of the house, but when she tried, the back door would not budge no matter how hard she pulled on the knob. She turned and run from the dining room. Her foot hit the edge of the counter and she began to fall. She jerked awake just before she hit the floor in her dream. The candle was still lit, but it was almost gone, and it was still raining out, and the but the wind had calmed down. She decided to go to bed and in no time was asleep, but this time it was dreamless. When she woke, she could hear it was still raining. Before she even got out of bed, she checked her phone. The service was back up, so she called the power company. They told her they'd be out as soon as they could. As she got dressed, she thought she smelled bacon being cooked. This was strange because she had never cooked breakfast in the farmhouse before. She only had coffee in the morning and would have an early lunch most days. When she reached the kitchen, the smell was gone. By the time she had drank her first cup, she had forgotten all about the smell. She went about her daily routine of sweeping the old wood floors and just as she got done, a large truck pulled up. They were there to fix the power already. This made her happy. An hour later, the power was back on. The radio came to life with the song, I Got You, Babe, by Sonny and Cher. She had never shut it off when the power went down. She booted up the computer, but the net was still down. The rain was still coming down, but was not as hard as last night. She was just glad that the wind had settled down. A woman's voice came on the radio and said, There's a full moon tonight, and they're saying the rain may let up a little for a couple hours so we may get to see it shine, but hope it's not a bad moon rising. Then the song by CCR started. As she ate her lunch, she again smelled something that should not have been there. It was a smell that a lot of old ladies had for perfume lilac. It didn't last long. It was as if someone had walked behind her at the store, wearing it. She even turned to look, but didn't see anyone. After lunch, she went to cleaning up the living room. She got the stuff that was to be put in the attic in a box. There were a lot of knickknacks that came with the house, but she wanted to make the place more her own. But she did keep, keep a few of them. There was a ceramic farmer holding a rake and his wife holding a picnic basket that she loved. She was ready for a glass of iced tea, so grabbed the box and went to the kitchen where the attic access was. 
killing two birds with one stone, she thought. She set the box down on the counter, reached up and pulled the stairs down, and old musty air hit her nose. She had not been up there yet, but was told there was a lot of junk there. She took out her phone, turned on the flashlight app before climbing up the stairs. Just at the top on a 2x4 was a switch for the lights. She looked at the junk that was all pushed to the sides. There were boxes that looked decades old, a couple of wooden chest or drawers, and an old chair or two. It was really clean, she thought, not what one would think of an attic to be. She went back down, got the box, went back up, found a place to put it, and as she set it down, noticed a piece of silver metal underneath a canvas tarp. She moved the tarp back and was surprised to find a weather vane. This one didn't look like any other one she had seen before. Most were just iron and had a rooster, a horse, or maybe a farmhouse, but this one was iron and silver and had a dragon on the top. It was a work of art, she thought, and should not be in the attic, so she took it down to the kitchen. When she set it down on the counter, she caught the scent of pipe tobacco smoke. Again, she looked around, but didn't see anyone. It didn't make her uneasy. It was just out of place, like the bacon and the lilac smell. She got out some barrasso and a cleaning rag, began to polish on the dragon. It was iron, but the polish took off years of grime from the metal. The cross arrow was made of silver and cleaned up nice. It didn't take long to clean it up, and when done, she wondered why it had been put in the attic. Was it originally part of the house? And was there a spot on the roof where it went? If it belonged there, she had decided to put it back up there. It really was a work of art, and maybe even a one of a kind. She took a few pictures with her phone to check on the net. She looked at the clock. It was almost four, and it was still raining out, but it was now lighter. She left the weather vane in the kitchen and headed back to the living room. When she was halfway down the hall, she heard a loud pop sound, followed by tires screeching and a crash. She ran to the front door and looked out. There was a light blue car in the ditch. She grabbed her coat and an umbrella, and by the time she opened the door and stepped out on the porch, a man got out of the car waving his hand at her, showing he was okay. In his other hand, he had a cell phone and was trying to call someone. Seeing he was okay, she didn't go out into the rain. The man walked around trying to get a signal, but she could tell he didn't have any luck. He began to walk up the driveway. He looked to be a middle-aged businessman, well-kept with better-than-average suit that by now was very wet. He kind of smiled and said, Sorry about your mailbox. Blowout. Are you okay? she asked. He kind of giggled in answer. I'm fine, but my car is not. Is there a garage with a tow truck nearby? He held up his cell phone and added, No bars on this. Come up out of the rain. Service has been down since yesterday. He joined her up on the porch. So do you have a landline, he asked. She shook her head no and added, Most likely the bridge is closed off with all this rain, she pointed the to the way of town. He looked disappointed, turned and was about to go back out in the light rain when she, for some reason she didn't understood, said, Hold on, you should come in and dry off. You'll catch a cold. She could tell he didn't want to be a burden to her, but said a cup of hot coffee would be nice after she had offered him one. Sorry about the mess, still moving in and remodeling, she said as they entered the house. She led him to her office, and as he entered, the song Devil Inside by Enix began to play. She smiled and said, take your coat off and have a seat. I'll get coffee going. She was not sure why she was being this nice. Normally, she would have never let a stranger in her house. There was something about him, an animal magnetism of some kind, she thought, as she put the water in the Mr. Coffee. She didn't drink much of it after breakfast. 
but he didn't look like an iced tea type, and the coffee would warm him up after getting wet. When she entered the office with her tray, he was sitting down on the couch. He had taken off his suit coat, and it was draped over the arm to dry. Hope you don't mind kind of wet, he smiled. Not at all, she handed him a cup of and said, sugar, milk? He shook his head. Black is fine, just needs to be hot. He took the cup. They talked for uh, over an hour. She learned his name was Chase, just like the bank, he laughed. He was on his way to a meeting in Georgia and didn't like flying, so he rented the car. He was an investment advisor and a successful one at that, from what he told her. The DJ on the radio said the bridge was closed down till the next day and the cell and internet service should be back up later that night. She noticed the time and told him to relax as she went to fix them something to eat. She was enjoying his company more than she thought she should. She put the weather vane on the floor and as she filled a pot of water to cook some spaghetti noodles, she looked out the window. It was getting dark and as the radio said, the sky was clearing up some. The moon should be rising in about 30 or 40 minutes, she thought. By the time she went to drain the spaghetti, she noticed the moon was beginning to show in the trees. She took the food to the dining room table, looked at the office door that was almost closed as, so she was unable to see Chase. She yelled to come get it, after a moment, she yelled again and still no reply, so she went to see if he had fallen asleep. She pushed the door the rest of the way open, and he was not there, but his suit coat was still there. Maybe he went outside to see if he could get his cell to work, she thought. She went to the front door, opened it, and looked out. He was not on the porch, so she called his name. She could see all the way to his car because the moon was now topping the trees. He was not out there. She was about to close the door when she heard a low howl that grew to a full-out howl of a wolf coming from the woods on the side of the farmhouse. She slammed it shut. There were wolves in the area but seldom been seen by anyone and she had never heard of someone getting attacked. She hoped Chase was okay. She went to her office and took out the 38 she had in her drawer just in case. She walked through the house to make sure he was not somewhere in there. When she reached the living room, she heard something outside so looked out the window and thought she saw movement out at Chase's car. It was just a shadow but she wanted to make sure he was okay so she went to the front door again. Opening it slowly a few inches, she yelled out, Chase? Chase, are you there? She started to pull the door open more when she again smelled pipe smoke. And when she pulled, it would not move, almost as if someone was holding it. She heard a noise on the driveway side of the porch. Then there was a low growl. She pushed the door shut hard. Fear filled her mind as she slid to the floor with her back against the door. She tried to listen, but all she could hear was her own heartbeat. Why would a wolf be stalking the farm or her? Was it rabbit? It had to be sick to risk coming around humans, she thought. She sat there a few minutes and could not hear anything. Maybe it had moved on, she thought. She, slowly, she got to her feet, being as quiet as she could. She had never been as scared, this scared before. Her hands were shaking so bad if she had to use the gun, she most likely would have missed. She went room to room, turning off all the lights, hoping to make it harder for it to see into the house. She wondered what had happened to Chase. Was he still alive hiding somewhere or hurt somewhere needing help? She checked her cell, it was still down. She crouched down by the office window and peeked out. The moon was now full and lit up the yard. She sat there for some time when suddenly there was a sound of glass on the front door bursting inward, scattering down the hall. She jumped and let out a squeal of fear. 
She pulled the hammer back and the pistol, watching the door to the hall. She heard the sound of sniffing as a shadow filled the doorway, but it was not the shape of a wolf, but somewhat the shape of a man. At first she thought it was Chase. She had no clue how or did not have time to think about it, but all the lights in the house came on at the same time. What she seen shocked her, standing in the doorway is what one could only call a werewolf with its teeth showing an evil-looking smile, drool dripping from its mouth as it growled at her. She smelled lilac again, and in her ear, an old woman's voice said, Run. She jumped up, dropped the gr gun, and ran into the dining room. As soon as she went through the door, it slammed on its own, as the beast let a howl, out a howl of anger and shock. There was a thud on the door that made the whole thing shake, and in her ear, ear she heard an old man's voice say, The kitchen, it's where you need to be. She did as she was told and went into the kitchen, and again the door slammed behind her. She heard the beast hit the door a couple of times and heard the door give away. She went to the back door and tried to pull it open, but it would not move. She was stuck in the kitchen now and the door would only slow the thing down. She went to the sink and grabbed a big knife, wishing she had never dropped the gun as the beast hit the door hard. It knew she was in there and was hell-bent on getting her. She had never believed in the paranormal or cryptics before, but had no other way to explain what was going on. She held the knife in front of her as the door was ripped from its hinges. The beast let out a howl, seeing her standing there. Suddenly the room was full with a smell of pipe smoke that made the beast sneeze and shake its head. Out of the air formed a shape that became an old farmer holding a rake and next to him an old woman smiling. Sue is not sure what shocked her more, the beast or the appearance of the two apparitions. The beast stared at them just as shocked as she was. She backed over to stand next to the old woman, still holding the knife. The beast moved the rest of the way into the room, never taking his eyes off the old farmer, who pointed down at the floor where it laid the weather vane. It began to rock back and forth, then raised off the floor, all on its own. The beast looked confused at the sight. The old woman reached over and touched Sue's arm and whispered, Don't worry, my dear. We're here to help, and all will be back to normal soon. Nothing will be back to normal again, she thought. She heard the old farmer say something, but was unable to make it out. Then he pointed at the beast, and the weather vane shot across the room and impaled itself into its chest. The beast let out a howl so loud she dropped the knife and lost consciousness. Epilogue Miss, miss, a voice called to her in the dark. Her head was spinning and it hurt. She's coming around now. She opened her eyes. There was a young paramedic leaning over her and she could see a couple of police officers standing there. One of them leaned down and said, You're a mighty lucky young woman. Can you sit up? The paramedic asked her. She slowly nodded her head and with help sat up. She looked out over at where the beast had been, but it was not there. Instead lay Chase, the weather vane stuck in his chest. The officer that had spoken before said, We've been after this guy for over a year now. He's wanted for over two dozen murders. Wow, she thought. She was having a hard time dealing with all this. Chase was a werewolf, and they thought she had killed him. She would never tell him that it or he was killed by the ghosts of the former owners of the farmhouse. They would never believe her. She could smell. She caught the smell of pipe smoke and lilac, and knew as long as she lived there, she'd be safe.